About the description, we can say that the height is up to 20 or 25 meters, but usually we are in 10 or 15 meters. The leaves are um, with elongated tips. We have a corky warts in the, on the pale underside. The flowers have uh, an art cream colorated, and um, we have also a lot of. Um, uh, for sepal, for wet hair petal, uh, we have still the root and the seed are vivibus and start to develop while still uh, attached to the tree. And the bubbles are long and happy. The distribution um, uh, is in the Indo Pacific region, Eastern Africa, Asia, South Pacific, and Australia. About the salinity, we can say that it has a low tolerance of uh, salinity. Uh, grows near the channels, in estuaries, in the tidal creeks, and uh, flat coastal areas that are subject to daily high activity. The next one is Cherep Stagal, and uh, it is a um, um, uh, it has a medium size and up to uh, 55 me me meters. And um, <coughs> is severely uh, uh, to orange brown bark, uh, smooth with occasional deficiency. And uh, the particular of this plant is that uh, as a propagation, that uh, it's a uh, long with a, um, uh, an orange uh, a part on the on the up of the propagation that became uh, orange and uh, red uh, when uh, it is. Uh, and the distribution is in the eastern southern Africa, in New Caledonia, in Australia, 
and um, these uh, the third column of this is um, Mokuto Bay, and uh, it grows in the inner part of the forest. And uh, Okay, I'm going to present about Lumine Serra versus Mossa. As you see, this status on the conservation status, it says it's a least concern, so it's not vulnerable, and we thank God for that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to, the classification, we can see there how it is, we have the family and the order. The description, it just is a small, medium size, it's up to 35 meters. Um, above leaves with two feet margins, flowers are small and white. We can look at the pitch on top to see the flowers and they are followed by hood. Fluttering fruits containing a single seed, it has ephemeral pneumatophore, is a fast growing pioneer species. It has egg holes roots. Uh, the distribution, <coughs> the this mangrove we can find it in the Indian Ocean, in our ocean, <laughs> <laughs> tropical and subtropically Asia, tropical and subtropical Asian to the western passive. It's usually found in areas where there is sea page of fresh water, both on beaches and banks of creeks. It is often found in the high part of intertidal zone. It is in fact the uppermost mangrove species occurring right after the limit of terrestrial vegetation. If we, if we recall, we saw it on when we were getting sprayed to the So Okay, I'm going to give space to Nadia to present the next slide. Okay, About about uh, I can talk about uh, the nation of uh, mangrove in Maput Bay, but specifically in Inyaka Island. Hello, uh, Portuguese. Very much. Como nós podemos ver nessa imagem a zonação dos mangais uh, na Bahia de Maputo? Uh, temos em primeiro a Lisoforma micronata que se encontra no, no início dos canais, <coughs> ao que faz nos perceber que ele prefere as zonas que, que têm mais uh, inundações. Depois disso, nós temos a, a Xilocatus granatum, isso é para a Baía de Maputo, mas quando nós já especificamos para a Ilha de Inhaca, Uh, nós retiramos a Xilocarpus, mais concretamente no saco da Inhaca. Nós retiramos o, a Xilocarpus Granatu e passamos a ter a Seriox Pagal. Uh, depois disso, nós temos a Bruguiera Juminoriza, temos a Avicenia Marina e, uh, por fim, temos a Lucimiera Resimosa. Lumiticiera racemosa. Ah, só para deixar mais claro, aqui na Inhaca nós temos já, na Inhaca, no saco onde nós podemos visitar, ah, observamos já a Risopra Mucronata, a Seriopus Tagal, a Bruguera Gimnoriza, a Avicenia Marina e Lutzimiera Racemosa. Lumiticiera Outra coisa que posso acrescentar ali na, na zona são é que normalmente a Lutzera Racimosa marca o limite de, de, de marca o limite uh, do mangal em relação à outra à, à floresta do interior. Yeah. Então, como o limite do local 
ok? Como é que está a Itália? Como o limite de mudança? É assim. Depois da mais para o interior? Mais para o interior, a zona interior, quando tu sais, por exemplo, Richard, é aquele Quando tu sais do. Acho que isso aqui, não é? Não sei se ela. Não sei se ela. Não sei se ela. Ok. Mas eu posso aproximar? Se você for aberto, então vê. Isso é mar, né? Sir. Né? Ali e mais para o interior, né? A zona onde nós ficamos, os humanos, neste caso, para ser mais específico. Então, quando você está saindo do interior do mangá, né? para a zona uh, uh, da costa, né? você encontra a mistura racimosa limitar o mangá, uhum. tá bom? Então, então vai ser a última espécie, última espécie que, você né, que você encontra né? para as espécies verdadeiras de mangá, ok? Então, depois daí você encontra aquelas associadas, aquelas dunas, não sei o quê. Então, quando você encontra a mistura racimosa, você tem que entender que você está saindo fora do mangá, ok? Yeah. Só isso que eu... Okay. Eu não sei o que é o slide a seguir, mas eu vou, vou me arriscar. Ok. Ah, nós temos os problemas com os mangais da, da, da Ilha de Inhaca, neste, neste contexto. É, como se vemos na entrevista hoje, podemos perceber que várias área do, do mangá da Ilha Inhaca estão sendo transformada para a prática de agricultura, ok? E construção de infraestruturas, por exemplo, tem aquelas instâncias turísticas que de, de, falaram que poderia Sim, e hoje durante a entrevista me falaram que uh, tem novo, novas casas, nova loja, muito perto do mangá, cortando o mangá, porque a gente quer ver a praia. Ok. Esse é um grande problema. Ok. O outro problema é também a situação para lenha e construção de casas, ok? E, um, a pesca de moluscos também, a situação de moluscos é um outro grande problema. E, por último, isso é, é um problema é, praticamente resultado das outros, dos outros problemas, o, a mudança do clima, ok? E temos também os problemas naturais. A erosão, nos falaram que na ilha dos portugueses, a Mangal e a ilha está ficando cada vez mais pequena, né, ao passar do tempo. Eu acho que isso é causa da erosão, não é? E, ok, acho que é só isso que eu posso acrescentar aqui. Não sei, colegas. Sim, Ok. How is the climate change an anthropogenic threat? It's like, I think we, like, thought about the, like, in general, with uh, the pollution and more CO2 in the, in the industry, and it's like, Perhaps mangroves, not only mangroves, but all actually the ecosystems. So we want to put this under the anthropogenic uh, uh, practice. Yeah. In, in the sense that climate change is caused by humans. Yes, that's the reason. <laughs> 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 but depending on the justification, it can be natural or anthropogenic. I feel like we have more impact on climate change yes. as humans in our in this ecosystem, so maybe for directly involved, uh, we made it directly, but the effects may be belonging to the natural world, meaning temperature, biotic and abiotic factors, but we made it, so it's anthropogenic in that sense. What would you think about professor? I'm going to put it in the other column between natural. Uh, was it to, to I would, uh, for me? I've, I've always thought it's a natural effect because from your explanation, yeah. because you're talking about the anthropogenic impacts are the ones that are bringing climate change, right? Yeah. yeah. Pollution, yeah. Uh, more uh, emission of CO2 are bringing changes in climate change, but. Is the change, the climate change cause of, is, is it a threat? Is it a human threat or a... Actually, it's what happened. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's like, 
better good pollution yes. and uh, aggression. Mm -hmm. But it is Yeah, but climate change now is impacting. Right? Because if you are asked to control climate change, I don't know, we, we can in some ways as human, mm -hmm. but not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You are getting me. Mm -hmm. I, I see what you mean, and I think I agree with you. And for me, the major concern about <coughs> climate change under anthropogenic is that uh, we understand that the climate is changing, but the climate has never been static. So you know, the perception that we have now is that changes are accelerated by human action. So if you look at a particular event, climatic event, how can we tell if this is part of natural or human climate change? <laughs> we know we have, for example, um, one cyclone per year in Mozambique, mm -hmm. but in every 50 years we have two cyclones. But this is an average. Sometimes it could be two, sometimes it could be three, sometimes it could be one. So in one particular year, how can we be sure that the two we had are part of climate change or not? Mm -hmm. It's just that it's really difficult. We know that things are changing, and we, and we also know that human action is influencing. But how can we tell for sure which particular event would happen or not without climate change? If we look, for example, back in history, we can see back then, so many cities that had to be moved to another place because of erosion. Mm -hmm. But today, whenever we see erosion, we say it's climate change. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's, a, it's the natural dynamics of a system. And um, we, we can talk a little bit about that in, with the mangroves in, in, in particular. So I think I, I, I agree with the Prof. Amina. I would, I would prefer to have climate change under natural or not or, or outside both of them because <laughs> okay. it's a third man, yeah <laughs> but it's okay it, your your explanation also makes makes sense but maybe we need to give a little bit more of a, of a thought <laughs> yeah yeah maybe because climate change is a big umbrella mm -hmm. but under but mm -hmm. we have uh, extreme flooding extreme increase of yeah. CO2 yeah. Maybe it's not the uh, temperature too wide yeah. to put it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Accretion, so sedimentation could mm -hmm. be yeah. some of the yeah. factors, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Sedimentation, even accretion could be another, you know, yes. erosion and yes. accretion, yes. you know. Yes. They're both factors mm -hmm. affecting because mm -hmm. if we lose uh, uh, this, the, the soil, we are losing some mangrove. Mm -hmm. And if sometimes the accretion also we are gaining more yes. mangrove areas. Yes. Yeah, so it's not like uh, when we went to visit next to the Porto, mm -hmm. they said like uh, where is the Porto? It's like almost 30 meters of new dunes, mm -hmm. new seaside mm -hmm. that were created in the past over 20, 25 years, yes. pretty much. So it's like new land. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Like, yes. 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 It's interesting. Uh, um, yeah, it's good that we touch that because again, mangroves are like all uh, natural systems. They are very dynamic. Some more, others less. Mangroves are very dynamic. So process like erosion, accretion, new, they build new land as well. It's part of, of, of the process. It's part of, of their ecological role. So they also build new land, and um, you will also find. Uh, the, a stand kind of shifting from one side to another. I noticed that you mentioned coastal erosion in the Portuguese island. I think mangroves used to be there, but no longer, no longer, and it was because of, of erosion. But my perception is that it was natural erosion. If you look at the whole Inyata Island system, it's very dynamic, um, especially in the ocean and the, and the side of open ocean is where you see very tall dunes and they move all around all the time. 
So the, 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 the part of Portuguese I island is, is a part of that system, very dynamic. It's basically sand. Portuguese island is basically sand. So it keeps changing all, all the time. But uh, yeah, it's a very good uh, presentation. Yeah. Good question. Um, if the level of the sea go down, mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, more uh, land for the mangroves mm -hmm. in the uh, part of the sea, okay. the coastal mm -hmm. uh, land. Uh, we uh, get more um, mm -hmm. this, uh, the area of the mangrove uh, increase, or the in the inner land, mm -hmm. the inner part of the land, uh, there is a um, know to say the decrease of the Lunicera mm -hmm. to how George say uh, so what, what we have instead of sea level rise we have sea level if the sea level go <laughs> down yes yeah. what do you think let's all think aloud we have I enough we have enough knowledge to try yes, to come with because that no, uh, just because the professora said uh, yeah. that uh, we we have too much. We have more uh, mm -hmm. land for mm -hmm. the mangroves mm -hmm. if the sea go down. But, but uh, I think that uh, Lumnitsera go uh, go um, go down with the sea. Mm -hmm. in, uh, mm -hmm. Just moving forward, it depends if the tides are gonna get to the uh, internal okay. part as it used to. Or Another not. thing with yes. that, you know, is what. There are a lot of encroachment in the mangrove areas. What? Huh? Encroachment. People are moving into the oh mangrove right. areas. Okay. Yeah. That's the bigger problem. Climate change could be could have positive impacts to mangroves and negative impacts. If we the land, the mangrove land increased, they have the uh, the mangroves have the capability of growing. But do they have the land? There are people moving inside the mangrove land. Mm. You understand? Mm. So that's the biggest problem. We have these cases in most of areas. People are moving into the mangrove land, and and that's uh, because they are developing hotels. Some are doing rice farming in this area. So as much as we, the line might increase, but the population is increasing and people are moving into the land. So we will definitely lose some mangrove because of that. Mm. But his question is the other way around. So mm. the sea level is going down. Mm -hmm. If the sea level is going down, your high tide line mm -hmm. is also coming down. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this, theoretically, the mm. species will come down. But um, as we, you, you, we will need to, in theory, you would not lose because the mangrove would, would move. But, but there is the space it's the move same down. thing. No, it's move down towards the sea. Oh, yeah. Because the but you need to be careful with a number of things. Like for example, is, if the water is coming down too quickly, and the the, the mangrove doesn't have time to, to because it's a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if the water is going down too quickly, you will not have enough time for the for the plants to recede with the sea. And then you also need to be sure that as the water level goes down soil characteristics will also follow because you know you have mud here but as you go down in, in, in the seabed of course the, the characteristics will change so if this doesn't change your mango will not be if it doesn't adapt your mango will not be able to follow so you may also lose um, but it's tricky in theory in the best conditions in the best possible conditions you would not lose because the mango will follow the, the water but and so many other aspects to consider. Yeah, just to hypothesize a future, mm -hmm. uh, idealistic future, mm -hmm. where in, uh, um, in one, I don't know, uh, the climate change doesn't exi exist, mm -hmm. and uh, the mangrove uh, in the inner part, uh, like the Lunicera, mm -hmm. um, the soil uh, around Lunicera mm -hmm. uh, uh, would be uh, Washed by uh, the fresh water from mm -hmm. the rain, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, the uh, tree of the the land uh, mm -hmm. that uh, will be uh, too much competitive in a soil without salt yes. can be uh, arrived in the uh, 
near the, the mountain. You mean if the ch if the climate is not changing, then you will have uh, um, other terrestrial species that will be a yes. threat we to, have the to the mangroves. We always have the, uh, the same uh, um, area mm -hmm. for the mangroves, mm -hmm. maybe. Possibly. But again, remember, mangroves are naturally a very dynamic system. Mm -hmm. I think, and th that is my personal opinion, when we think climate, when we think and discuss climate change, we really need to be careful. Because again, the climate has never been static. And in a way or other, we, we as living beings, we managed to adapt. Some species could not and died, were extinguished. Other species were able to adapt and are here today. But this thing of new species coming and other species dying is also part of the natural system. Yes, but so the focus, I know, the focus for climate change, instead of us looking at the whole phenomena as something bad, it is bad in the sense that we are accelerating it, yes. yes. But the focus, as, as Professor Mina said, I don't think we can stop it. But we can find smart ways to adapt. We can reduce our impact in the environment. We have to do that. We need to have a very a clean and as, as healthy, as much healthy and stable environment as we can. And we have the tools to do that. But we should really focus on reducing the impact and doing adaptation, smart adaptation. And by smart, I mean not harming the environment even further. And again, mangroves come as special because they do both. They mitigate by sequestering carbon and they adapt. We are, we are expecting erosion, we are expecting more um, floods, more cyclones, more and mangroves, they play that role of protecting us very, very, very well. For me, as, as long as we think about, for me, stopping climate change is like stopping the wind in our hands. <laughs> it's really big, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that we don't need to take care of the environment. We still have to do that. We still have to do our best, restore, do everything, everything possible, but focus more on adaptation. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the very problem is the, the timing of the change, of the, of the climate change. Yes. Huh? If it's uh, more is uh, fast mm -hmm. um, and too much uh, erosion we have, we, don't have we lost uh, the, yes. uh, the carbon stock, I think. That um, is why we do restoration, that is why we do conservation to try to make pace with that. Because things are really changing very fast. And that is why we look for solutions that will give us better results and faster. We find, for example, that mangroves sequester more and store for longer. So that's why we focus on mangroves as mitigation and adaptation structure. Uh, I mean strategy. It's like in, in Portuguese we say matar uh, coelho, dois coelhos com uma cajadada. You hit once, and you throw once, and you hit two rabbits. Mangroves allow us to do that. I understand what you say that we don't have time. Yes, we have very little time left. And well, that is why we are, we are doing all the stuff we are doing now. Uh, yeah. Uh, still on the climate change as a threat to mangrove. I think if we, if, even if we decide to put it either in anthropogenic or natural, uh, stating climate change as a threat doesn't, uh, it, it's not coming out as a threat, a threat as such. But the, what brings climate change? For example, with climate change, there are changes in temperatures, yeah? So does increase or decrease in temp temperatures yeah. affect mangroves? Mm -hmm. We see fluctuation in precipitation as a factor of climate change, right? Mm -hmm. Fluctuation of climate, uh, precipit uh, fluctuation of precipitation, how does it affect mangroves? For example, long rains, we talked about long mm -hmm. rains affecting mangroves. So those are the things that we can state as threats 
rather than putting mm. climate change yeah. as such. Like sea level rise, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a picture of climate change. Yeah. So it's better to put sea level rise as a threat because of submergence of islands, mm -hmm. because of increase of uh, sea level rise or decrease of sea level rise increase, mm -hmm. such things, rather than putting climate change okay. as a holistic yeah. approach. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're going to fix yeah. Mm -hmm. But you look, mm -hmm. is it a factor? Because we're talking about Inyaka. Mm -hmm. Is Inyaka affected by the rise in te sea level? Uh, have we lost some parts of mangrove mm -hmm. areas because of uh, rise we're of sea level? Also today yes. With the interviews, mm -hmm. it was very nice you to get told. feedback from the people mm -hmm. here. Exactly. That they said good. before that they talked to somebody, I talked to a lady too that uh, knew mm -hmm. about the Portuguese island and mm -hmm. erosion, how mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. modified the system, mm -hmm. and she was worried that the same was going to happen here. Yes. And she considered the Portuguese island kind of to protect Inaka. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah. It's interesting so, also to have the perspective of the community and yeah. how they perceive the problem. Yeah. Yeah. It was really good that you were able to incorporate the information that you got from the community because community perception is really very important information. And uh, I have maybe one slide on that later, but it's, mm -hmm. it's really, it was really good that, yeah. that you could very, see that. They are very aware of mm -hmm. yeah. the indigenous them. knowledge. No. Mm -hmm. We call it indigenous yes. knowledge, knowledge, yes. knowledge yes. from the people. It's yes. quite important. Yes. You don't just go to literature and see, but you get very good information from the people. Yes. Yeah, with sometimes some, sometimes they are not included in the fact. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Uh, okay. I see you have more slides. Um, no? That's the last one me. was kind of a draft of mm -hmm. an article that uh, Kami proposed. But we looked into it and it was not very specific. It had okay. some discrepancies. For example, mm -hmm. the data that uh, referred to Maputo in one phrase was referred to Maputo City, mm -hmm. and in the one next to it to Maputo Province. And so it had the same value. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a draft and we decided not to okay. include it because it was not okay. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's OK. Uh, but just for clarification, Maputo Bay it's the only place in Maputo province where we have mangroves. Of yeah, course, yeah. it was a mistake. They should use always the same term. Yeah, but they use city. So that's oh, what. Oh, city. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. So I that didn't means know if they meant yeah, just the yeah, city yeah. or Maputo, Maputo Bay. Bay. So okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. You're welcome.